What is up everybody? Back at you again with another video and today we're just gonna do a quick you know little rumor roundup of uh, you know the Civic Type R that's supposed to be coming uh, this year. We're gonna talk about some of the you know the teasers and spy shots and also some of the articles and rumors and stuff that uh, uh, that has been coming out about the vehicle. Uh, yeah so let no more wasting time let's just get into it. So as we know, Honda has been teasing the heck out of this vehicle. Uh, we've seen it test on the Nuremberg ring. Uh, we've seen it at the Japanese Auto Salon and testing at uh, Suzuka. And I think we've seen it test one more other place. I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, I'll probably put it in if I do. But overall, I think the vehicle looks way better uh, than the FK8. And I thought the FK8 was actually a really good looking vehicle. I thought it was really cool. Um, even though a lot of people claim or say that's overstyled, you know, but we all have different tastes in cars. Uh, but anyways, I like the front bumper. Um, it looks kind of like an R33 or a Nissan Sentra SER. I think it looks really good in my opinion. It looks really sporty. It complements the le Levergen styling uh, with uh, the, LED the daytime LEDs and the headlights. Um, the hood scoop just makes it look a lot more sporty and cooler in my opinion. I just really love how the front looks and I can't wait till we actually see it. Now moving towards the side profile of the car, we see that they have the Brimbro brakes of course uh, with these new wheels. I think they're probably going to be BBS wheels, uh, but these wheels are 19 inch inches. The previous had 20 inch wheels, uh, so it's probably going to be a little bit lighter. Uh, than the previous generation's wheels um, and it's also going to offer a little better ride a uh, ride quality because the wheels are smaller as well also uh, and they still look really good in my opinion and it doesn't really take away um, you know from the sportiness and the design of the vehicle uh, with these new wheels and also see that it has a, it's going to have a different size skirt you know in, co in complement uh, with the new body kit that this vehicle is going to have and it kind of and if we look towards um, and if we look towards the front there's going to be Looks like there's going to be a little vent or air curtain uh, right by the door, the front door as well. Uh, which just adds to the overall sporty look. But when we go towards the, towards the rear of the vehicle, they obviously use a different spoiler. Uh, this looks like the HPD spoiler um, that they use on the new Civic Hatch. Um, I think it's a Honda Genuine Accessory. You know, in the back looks just like a normal Civic Hatch, uh, but it looks like the bumper at the rear is kind of protruding a little bit from the vehicle. Uh, so it's kind of going to be styled a little, a lot differently. And of course we get that three triple O uh, exhaust outlet. Um, and that probably means you're not going to be towing with this thing, but uh, you wouldn't use a type R for towing of course, but uh, just a little joke. But um, overall it looks solid. I really like how it looks. Um, one thing I forgot to add is that the tires are now 265. Uh, which you would think would need more power, but according to um, the leaks I'll go into or the rumors I'll go into in a bit, the car isn't going to be getting any more power, which is completely fine. But let's move on to the interior of this. So when we look at the interior overall, I think the Aleva Gen interior just makes the Type R look a lot more classy in my opinion. So of course we get these red seats. Um, I think it's pretty similar to the ones or the exact same as the ones that are offered on the 10th gen but I think the main upgrades are the 11th gen stuff that are added in here um, so you're going to get that same um, non-scratch material uh, that's used in the vehicle as well you got the 9 inch touchscreen. it looks like you're going to get the 10 inch um, digital gauge cluster uh, which was not available on the SI and I like how they kind of limited the red uh, of the choice I think they used like a lot of red looking back at the SI and I like how this ha has the the red seats are the main point but everything else it is black so you know uh, the honeycomb vents is a uh, the white color uh, which kind of offsets the red a bit in my opinion meanwhile on the SI it was red the door panels are going to be completely black um, where on the SI it was red uh, the seat belts have the nice red accent, which kind of complete the look in my opinion. I also forgot to talk about the um, Alcantara steering wheel. Uh, it's probably going to get dirty, you know, when you're going to keep touching it, you know, but uh, that, that's kind of the stuff that these type of vehicles have. One thing I did notice is that this is uh, doesn't have the heating uh, seat button, which is kind of bizarre because you would think this would be based on a touring trim. Uh, maybe Pyrrhus might like it because it reduces the weight, but you know if I'm living with this car and stuff I at least want some heated seats on my bum, you know 
Uh, overall, I think it's a lot better in my opinion. This looks far better than the 10th gen uh, interior, and it's a lot more classy uh, than the SI interior. And uh, if it comes out like this, Honda did a good job, of course. And we all know this is going to be good anyway because the 11th gen interior is highly touted um, and is one of the best in class. So you can't really lose in uh, this situation. The one question I do have is, is this going to be three seats or is it going to continue with the tradition of having four seats? Um, having three seats just in increases the, the practicality of the vehicle so much. And uh, I think Honda should go to that instead of doing the what they're, what they're doing in the 10th gen because it's just the increased practicality. If you want to have cup holders, have it on the third, on the middle seat, you know, you just pull it out as a normal one and that's it. So according to this article from The Drive in Australia, um, they're not going to be adding any more power to this vehicle. Um, so it's probably going to remain at the three, 306 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. Um, they said that the torque characteristics have improved for improved throttle and engine response. So we might get like a lighter th uh, flywheel um, and stuff like that. Maybe a different torque band uh, like they did in the Honda Civic Si. Um, and they also talked about it's going to have the six-speed manual, of course, but uh, automatic transmission is expected to be available. Then to be honest, I don't really care that um, this car has had manual transmission for you know the past how many years an automatic transmission will open the market up to new buyers and it'll also keep more sales going for this vehicle uh meaning that honda can, can uh, continue to impr produce uh you know the si and the type bar and uh continue to make improvements um improvements to them before they go electric you know some people have disabilities or that you know they don't want to learn how to uh do a manual transmission and i think that this offers a good alternative and you don't have to go to another competing brand uh, to get an automatic transmission. So they say that this automatic transmission is expected to be a six-speed gearbox with tr uh, paddle shifters. Uh, I'm not really too sure about that. Maybe this could be a new transmission that they're going to put in uh, the Integra or the Integra Type S because that's supposed to have an automatic. But wouldn't it make sense for them to take uh, you know, the eight-speed DCT that they have and just improve on it? And then put it in the in this car, um, which would uh, just be easy in terms of development and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And also, wouldn't an automatic transmission technically uh, take away from the Integra Type S sales, assuming that's going to be a similar car, similar power, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, but we'll have to see when uh, those vehicles are revealed. And um, yeah, the only other thing I want to address is that it's going to uh, have a quiet exhaust. Uh, from uh, watching the testing on Suzuka, I think, um, listening to the engine notes and the exhaust sound from it going by, it just seems a little quiet. And I like how Veloster, um, not Veloster, I like how Hyundai offers, you know, the scrap crackle pops, the louder exhaust on that vehicle. Um, this will probably have, uh, you know, the interior uh, active sound control with the Civic Si. And I think the previous generation Type R has this too. Um, and if you want to turn it off, you have to go deep into the dashboard and unplug it. But from what I hear with the SI reviews, I hear it's pretty decent. Uh, so that can make up for it. But and apparently when I was looking at Reddit, reading these comments, apparently a lot of you don't really like the snap crackle pops of the Velocity N, the Launcher N, even though I think it's cool. So, you know, uh, you know, different market for different people, different strokes, different folks, and that's completely OK. Uh, so this will appeal to somebody. So and that's pretty much it. So hopefully, uh, I can't wait to see more details for the Type R. Um, I'll keep you guys updated as more stuff comes out. So like, subscribe, etc., etc., and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Peace.